So take out your Bibles and turn to Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to take a look at the first four verses devotionally today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you as our Father, as our Creator, as the source of all that is good, every good and perfect gift, source of life, knowledge, wisdom, love. We thank you for your promise that if we will seek you with all of our hearts, you want to be found. And Lord, we want to find you and hear you through your word this day. Through Christ I pray. Amen. I want to do something different today. I just finished my uh, Sunday night uh, Bible study discussion group with uh, with um, some uh, some 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 guys, and um, it's such a rich time. And I thought rather than sharing with you something that I've put a lot of time in preparation, I want to share with you out of the richness of the discussion that we just had. Um, partially because it was just, it, it was so fruitful and encouraging, but also to help you know what, you, what happens when you're in one of these groups and how God can speak to you. So I want to share with you out of the riches of what I, I just experienced. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, what do you hear God saying about Jesus? That was the first question that we discussed tonight. Simply, what is God telling us about Jesus? What do we learn from Jesus in this passage? The Bible says, therefore, and this is the CSB translation. By the way, just a little note about translations. This is CSB. This is Christian Standard Bible as well. But even that has changed from time. This is 2017, and this what it, what I have online is even different from that. But anyway, so therefore, since we have such a large crowd of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares. Let us run with endurance the race li that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith, for the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostilities from sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and give up. So that you, what's the opposite of, of growing weary and, and, and giving up? So that you will grow in strength and endure, persevere. In struggling against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. What do you hear God say about Jesus? What do you hear God say that encourages you from this? Now, the first thing that we notice is the word therefore. Therefore, since we have such a large crowd of witnesses surrounding us, immediately you're asking, what's this crowd of witnesses that's surrounding us? And you would go back to the immediate context, which is the 11th chapter of Hebrews, which is the listing of the Hall of Fame of the Faith. I'm going to talk about this actually in our next devotional. But um, the Hall of Fame of the Faith, the, the, the great people of faith that, are, that we're introduced to in the Bible, we see their lives. They're not perfect people, but they're people saved by the, their faith in God. They're people who live not for this world, but for for God. We have examples of everyone from Abel to Abraham to Moses. And then we have this whole litany there at the end of the 11th chapter of people who served faithfully, not perfectly, but follow God faithfully, and many even to the point of death, to the point of shedding their blood. This great cloud of witnesses, and therefore we turn to the 12th, the beginning of, the, of what we call the 12th chapter. And you have this transitional hinge word, therefore, in view of what they have done and how God has shown himself faithful to them, their example that we, therefore, since we are, have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, and that picture is a, a picture of, of, um, as, uh, of, of like the Olympics, where this crowd is surrounding us and they are witnessing us run our race 
but they're also witnessing to us by their example. And we're surrounded. Now, some people like to take this literally, that in heaven there's this great cloud of witnesses that is watching us run our race, and that may be the case. I think certainly we know it's a figure, that by their example, they're, they, they are witnessing to us. By their example, they're encouraging us to run with endurance. Since we have this cloud, we're not running the race alone. We're running with their encouragement. We're running with their example. Let us lay aside what every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Two different things. There are sins that certainly ensnare us and weigh us down and beset us. And then there are just hindrances. They're not necessarily sins. They're just unnecessary extra weights, distractions, um, misplaced priorities. But let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus. Now, that's, that really is at the heart of this passage. And I, I love what the writer here does for us. He takes our eyes and we, we are seeing the crowd. We're listening to the crowds. And then we realize as we're looking at the crowds, the crowds, their eyes are on, have been on one all along as well. If you read the 11th chapter, they have been looking for the promise. What's the promise? The promise is Jesus Christ. The promise is the Son of God, the Messiah that God would send as Savior. So what are we to do? Yeah, keeping in mind the crowds and their witnesses, but now all of a sudden we're focused on one in the crowd. His name is Jesus. Keeping our eyes on Jesus. Any athlete knows, this is one of the things we talked about in our group today, every athlete knows the importance of focus. You know, where your eyes are determines everything, determines balance. You know, I was talking to my brother Phil about how I remember learning to trick ski and they said, you know, when we turned around on tricks for the first time, I remember them saying, now make sure you keep your eyes on the horizon. Keep your eyes up. The tendency is to keep your eyes on the bottom of your skis as you're going backwards. No, you want to keep your balance up. Baseball's the same thing. What are you doing with your eyes? Golf is the same thing. What are you doing with your with your head? And, and, and so the Bible would say, what are you doing with your head? Where's your head? Where are your eyes fixed? Are they, are they down? Are they on other people? Keep your eyes on Jesus. If you're going to be strong and endure, keep your eyes off of the distractions and on to Jesus. And what happens when we do that? We see Jesus who is the source and perfecter of our faith the beginner and perfecter, the pioneer and perfecter. And I love the discussion that we had in our group tonight about what's it mean that Jesus is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith? When you think of pioneer, what do you think of? You think of the one who shows the way, the one who goes before. You know, the thing about pioneers is um, they, they don't, they make maps, they don't follow maps. Jesus is the pioneer. He shows us the way. He shows us the best way. You know, pioneers, for those who come back, but behind them, the pioneers can say, as Patrick McGinnis said, um, pioneers can say, hey, you want to go at this across, you want to ford at this part of the stream, not that part of the stream. You want to go to this territory, not that territory. This is the way that's the better way, the safer way, or the smarter way. That's the dangerous way. You want to avoid that way. Jesus is the pioneer who's gone before. Will we listen to him as pioneer? Will we follow him as pioneer and perfecter of our faith? And I, the, I, or some translations say the source or the author. And I love the 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 the, the um, bookends of that are wonderful. Who is it who began your faith? It is he who will also perfect your faith. Who's the one who's the author of your faith? You know, there's a sense, a real sense in which faith does not begin with you and me. And sometimes we get tired because we feel like faith is such a struggle. Growing in faith, am I going to Am I doing enough? Am I, um, am I, am I going to get to where God wants me to be? 
And it can be such, it can weigh you down if you feel like it's all up to you. It's all in your strength. And in our discussion tonight, we talked about what peace there is in knowing um, that God is the source of our faith. He is the writer of our faith. He's the beginning of our faith. And our faith is in Jesus as we look to him. And as Paul says in Philippians, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. He'll perfect it. And so it's not a matter of me having to prove myself or to carry myself or in a sense even to develop myself. It's a, it's a matter of me following the pioneer of my faith, the beginner, trusting in him and allowing him to perfect my faith. I have to focus on obedience. So if you live in fear of disappointing God or disappointing yourself or not living the life that God wanted you to, really the question is not how much do I have to try harder, but the question is are you focused on Jesus? Maybe your eyes need to be fixed more on Jesus and less on yourself, less on you and your faith and more on Jesus and saying, Jesus, help me to hear you, help me to follow you, help me to trust you. And you and we just walk in obedience to him. As we've said, he's the good shepherd. We hear his voice and we follow and he perfects our faith. He makes our faith what we've always longed it to be. Why? Who for the joy that lay before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I remember having a conversation with Tim Jones years ago about, was Jesus selfishly motivated when he went to the cross? You know, for the joy set before him endured the cross. Was Jesus' motivation personal fulfillment, personal enjoyment? Well, you look at what was, they have to ask the question, was the what was the joy that lay before Jesus? Was it a selfish joy? Was it a, I get to be fulfilled joy? The joy that lay before him was that he is the author and perfecter of our faith. It's the joy that every parent has who's wanting and, and glad to sacrifice to see the greater joy of the children. It's the joy of the parent who are will, who's willing to sacrifice for their kids to come to faith, for their kids to walk with Christ. So the joy of Jesus isn't, hey, I get to be back in power again. That's a humanistic kind of thing. The joy set before him was your faith. Imagine that, the joy of Jesus going to the cross. What got him through the cross? It was the joy of knowing you are going to come to faith and you're going to walk with him and you're going to be his child who for the joy I set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. I love that. We'll come back to it in a second. Sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition, such hostility from sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and give up. What does it mean to consider him who endured such hostility so that we won't grow weary and lose up and give up? First of all, consider him who despised this shame. He didn't like it either. Maybe you're looking at your life right now and saying, I don't like what I'm going through. I don't like the world as it's going crazy. I don't like how difficult my life is. I don't like what God is allowing me to go through to strengthen me. Jesus didn't like it either. He despised the shame. He didn't like being stripped naked. He didn't like being falsely accused. He didn't like the unjust treatment. He didn't like being beaten. He didn't like going to the cross. He despised the shame, just like you do. Consider him who endured such opposition so you won't grow weary and lose heart. Why? Because he knew all along he was going to win. Consider him and why do we find strength in him and, and looking to him? Why do we persevere? Because like Christ, we know, even though it looks like sometimes we're on the losing team, we know before the crown is the cross. Even in the cross, Jesus is the victor. Obedience to the Father leads to the crown. And even though it may even though you may lose temporarily, even though you may be unpopular temporarily, even though people may ostracize you temporarily, endure such opposition from sinful men, just like Jesus did. Because what happens 
when you despise the shame, you go through the cross, God exalts you. God praises you. God looks at you and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. And while we hear that in eternity, that first day that we see God, you can hear that now, you know? Isn't that encouraging to think that even now as you endure opposition, not for being an idiot. If you endure opposition for being an idiot, that's on you, you know? But if we endure suffering, if we endure opposition, if we endure ostracism, if we endure chastisement because of faithfulness to Jesus, we hear God say, well done. Don't grow weary and lose heart because we fix our eyes on Jesus and he went through the cross and he experienced its shame and he sat down at the throne of God and he's our pioneer. He went before us so we know the path as well and it's a path to victory. By the way, he says, in your struggle against sin, you've not yet resisted the point of shedding your blood. Now, it doesn't mean that those people haven't been hurt. It doesn't mean that those people haven't even bled for Christ. But when you look in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, you see there are people who died for their obedience, for their faithfulness to God. And we look at Jesus, and he shed his blood for us. But the cross is not the end of the story. The resurrection, glory is. And so it is with you and me as well. And that's just some of the discussion that we had tonight in our group. I wonder what you hear God saying about Jesus' example for you to fix your eyes on Jesus today. Therefore, since we have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. So is there any hindrances you need to let go of? Any, any sins? Any hindrances of like false guilt? Any hindrances of, 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 of poor allegiances? Any hindrances of, um, of shame? Burdens that God wouldn't want you to carry? And he's saying, hey, let me carry those. And the sin that so easily entangles, any re repentance that needs to be offered. Well, let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source, the beginner, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart, but then in contrast, you will be strong and endure. Heavenly Father, we surrender our lives to you. We thank you for Jesus and his example. Help us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus today. As our pioneer who goes before, as our author who's writing the story, I thank you that I don't have to write the story, that you're writing the story. I just need to obey with the story that you want to write in me. And you are the perfecter. You are the finisher. I can, we can trust you that no matter what hits us, that may seem unfair or strange, you know, whatever may feel like it's stealing our lives, whether it's opposition from the outside or sickness from the inside, whether it's COVID, whether it's a loss of a job, um, Lord, may we realize, may we look to you and say, you are the one who's finishing our lives. That nothing significant that you would have for us can ever be taken away by circumstances. So may we keep our eyes on Jesus. Lord, perfect our life, finish the work that you would have done in us so that we will not grow weary and lose heart. I know lots of tired people right now, and we need your strength. So Lord, strengthen today. Through Christ I pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us. If you found this encouraging, maybe you want to share it with somebody else with a little note to say, hey, I found this encouraging. Be glad to talk to you about it if you're interested or something like that. And and um, and let me know if, if you've uh, how God is at work in your lives as well. Until next time, thanks for joining us.